Hey guys, this is Austin. This just might be the best gaming laptop that you can buy for less than a thousand dollars. When it comes to laptops that are meant for gaming, they are usually in one of two camps. Either they're really cheap and usually don't have either any dedicated graphics or pretty bad ones, or they're incredibly expensive, huge, thick, and heavy. But I think this actually is a sort of nice blend of the two. So this is the Dell Inspiron 7567. Yo, <laughs> this, is a, this is actually not a bad looking laptop. Now, if red is a little bit too much for you, you can actually get it in black, but that stands out. So open it up and you will see that it's a little bit of a bigger laptop. So we're rocking a 15.6 inch 1080p display. However, what's special is on the inside, as not only is this rocking a KB Lake Core i5 quad core processor, but it's also got dedicated GTX 1050 Ti graphics. Before we get too far into it though, let's see what else we get in the box, which doesn't really seem like much. We pretty much just get a power cable in the box, but that's not really a big deal because this has pretty much everything we need built in. So unlike most laptops these days, we actually get full-size USB ports, there's also HDMI, there's Ethernet, this is absolutely a gaming laptop. Now, sure, it's a little bit big and a little bit heavy, but considering what we're getting inside, it's not crazy. So now that we're up and running with the Inspiron, there are a few things that jump out to me, and the first is the screen. It's not great. So it is at least 1080p, but the issue is, is that not only are the colors sort of mediocre, but it is a very, very narrow sort of viewing angle. So if I get it in just the right spot, it looks fine, but all it takes is moving it just a little bit farther and the entire thing washes out. It reminds me of a much cheaper laptop. And while yes, this is definitely a laptop that is made to a budget, right? So they put pretty much all the money into stuff like the CPU, the GPU, the SSD, which is not a crazy call, but even if there's another 50 or $100 upgrade to get a better screen, I would absolutely take it. It's fine, it's usable, but it's not great. Hey guys, this is Austin. This computer is a little bit different. That is not bad. So in addition to the standard two speakers on the Inspiron, there's actually a dedicated subwoofer. So it's sort of right down here below the palm rest. And it's a surprisingly loud and rich sound. For a laptop, it's kind of rare to have a sub, but it really does give you a lot more definition and a lot more bass. It's a much punchier sound than I'm used to. The keyboard is decent. So I would say it's a little bit on the mushy side of things, but the layout is nice. You do have that full number row on the side and it's also backlit. Now it might not be winning any awards, but this is completely usable. The webcam isn't too special. So it's 720p and while it does have dual microphones, the video quality just isn't that great. Fine for a quick video call, but not for much more than that. The trackpad is also completely fine. So it supports multi-touch, the tracking is reasonably accurate, but honestly, a lot of this stuff isn't really all that exciting. What really separates the Inspiron from most other laptops in this price category is the performance. Inside the Inspiron, it's rocking a quad-core Intel Core i5-7300HQ, NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti graphics, and those are paired with 8GB of memory as well as a 256GB SSD. So one of the games I wanted to try is GTA 5. Now while this might be a slightly older title, it can still be pretty taxing. And as you can see here at 1080p ultra settings, we're getting anywhere between 40 to 50 frames per second. Next we have Overwatch. And I think this is a good example of a game that runs really well on the Inspiron. So the 1050 Ti might not be able to handle 4K gaming, but at 1080p Ultra, we're getting a really solid 70 frames per second. This is the only model of the Inspiron that comes with pure SSD storage, in this case, 256 gigabytes. So it's a SATA drive, so you shouldn't expect any kind of crazy speeds, but here we're getting about 400 on the read and about 330 megabytes on the write. It might not be the fastest thing in the world, but it's gonna be a lot better than any of the hard drive models. So there are multiple configurations of this guy. So this is the mid-spec model, but if you wanna save a little bit of money, you can drop it down to GTX 1050 graphics and a one terabyte hard drive, or if you wanna upgrade it, you can throw some things in like a Core i7. But really, I feel like this is the sort of sweet spot, as the other models get well over $1,000, and you're really not gonna be getting a lot more performance. So with a single screw, we can take off the bottom of the laptop. There is actually a lot of room for upgrades here. So as far as memory goes, we have eight gigs in here right now, but you can easily bump that up to 16 or 32 gigs. There's a completely open two and a half inch drive bay. So here, if you want, you can put in not only a hard drive, but an SSD, wherever you want to get some additional storage. Um, over here, we have the M2 SATA drive. So it won't really be any faster than a normal SSD, but as you can see, it's a lot smaller and it does give us that full drive bay. Um, it's actually a pretty clean layout here. You can see the dual fans with the heat pipe between the CPU and GPU. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the subwoofer is actually surprisingly big. It takes up a lot of room. And of course we have the battery here too, which looks super easy to remove. I've gotta say it's been a while since I've opened up a laptop that's this easy to work on. There is a lot to like with the Inspiron. For $850, it makes a solid gaming or editing laptop. And while the screen could be better, there's really not a lot to complain about. So what do you guys think? Definitely be sure to let me know in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one.